you want to upload your PQ8 game to Newgrounds and I'm gonna show you how. So Newgrounds is a bit of a weird website, it's uh, not quite as popular as a target to upload PQ8 games to, but I think it should be a lot more popular. It is a bit of an older website that is targeted at, I think, teenagers and younger people. It has a lot of memes and a lot of, uh, let's say, crass content. But even today it has a really large community and some specific decisions result in this being a really good place to get feedback. When posting to itch or to the Lex Love BBS, you often just like post and there's nobody, nobody says anything. Or if you get some feedback, it's gonna be all just like, great game. So you never really find out if there's anything wrong with your game because people are just like too polite, just a little bit too polite. They don't want to hurt your feelings. Well, Newgrounds is certainly a place to get your feelings hurt and that's why we're going there. Another reason to get into Newgrounds is that actually it's pretty easy to get your game up. The website itself looks a bit daunting, but you know, like a very basic PQ8 upload takes no time at all. Now, reasons against using Newgrounds is, well, again, like this is a place where people are very direct and sometimes quite edgy and that may not be the most pleasant experience. So if you don't want to expose yourself to that kind of scrutiny, I totally understand. Another reason against Newgrounds is that it has a lot of not safe for work content. Itch.io has this too, but I think in Newgrounds it's a lot more prominent. Not a very family friendly place, if you know what I mean. And finally, yeah, it's close to impossible to monetize anything on Newgrounds, so it is basically a place to upload your games for free. And you need to be okay with that. All right, so let's get started. This is um, PQ8. I, the M, my directory is completely empty. I've wrapped everything and it's just my game.p8, the demonstration game that we are gonna upload. I'm gonna load this. And if you run this, you will see that this is basically a remix of uh, the breakout game that I created in a breakout tutorial. If you want to know how to make this kind of game, then uh, you should click on the link that appears right now. Yeah, it's that kind of game. In order to get things on Newgrounds, we need to do an HTML5 export. We're gonna do this by using the export command. Uh, so uh, if you just type in export, you will see all the different things that we can export into. What we're interested in is the .html export. So I'm gonna type in export my game .html. And you immediately get like an error message saying, please capture a label first. Now this error message refers to the label image. If you already know what a label image is and how to make it, then you can skip over this next section because otherwise I will get Christian from the past in here with very different outfit and he will explain to you how that gets done. Okay, Pico 8 cards are kind of like pretending to be cards of a console. And one feature of cards of consoles is that they have little images on them, little labels that kind of tease what kind of game is on that card. And so before publishing uh, PQ8 projects, we have to create those images for our PQ8 projects as well. This sounds more complicated than it really is. All we need to do is really just run the game. And whenever there is something interesting on the screen that we think might uh, make a good uh, card image, we just press F7. And there it is, we captured the card image. The title screen is a good candidate for that, but a good alternative is also showing uh, a bit of gameplay so people know what it is, what kind of game it is. Afterwards, all we need to really do is to save and we have saved our card image. Card images are used in a variety of situations. One place where they pop up is in the background uh, when you browse through cards on Splore. And if you do, you sometimes notice that some of the cards have actually pretty elaborate uh, images that actually maybe are not really popping up anywhere in the game. They seem to be uh, additional content. That's a bit of a trick that is a little bit outside of the scope of this little short tutorial, but I will post down in a doobly-doo a link to a, a post on lexlove.com explaining how to get your own graphics into the card image. Thank you, Christian, for the past. So now that we have a label image, we can actually continue the export. So we're gonna go export my game dot HTML. Whoops. There we go. So you see, um, the exporter created two files, and we're going to take a look at what those files are. All right, so this is my Pico 8 card folder, and as you can see, we have my game.p8, that was the original file that we started out with, but now we have two additional files. These two files are the HTML5 export. It's basically a tiny little website, and something you can actually do is actually double click on this, and it will launch a browser like this, and you can actually play the game in the browser right now. Now, something that we do when we upload Pico8 games to a website is basically take this little mini website and embed it 
in a bigger website, kind of like create like a window on that other website. And inside this window, we will have our little website. So we have to get those two files uploaded to a website. We're going to rename this mygame.html to index.html because all the websites that we upload stuff to, they expect our mini website that we upload um, to be called index.html. Now these are two files. So in order to kind of merge them into one file, we're going to put them in a zip folder. I'm going to right click. I'm just going to create a very stupid zip folder. I'm going to call this mygame.zip. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the two files in here and just copy them inside. That's it. Just to check, we can double click the folder and as you can see index.html and mygame.js. Now we are not quite done yet. There's also a little graphic that we need to prepare. That is basically the thumbnail that our game will be represented under on the website. It's a you know, little illustration. It could be a screenshot or it could be a logo or maybe some character from that. Something that indicates what the game is all about. For Newgrounds, the size of this graphic is exactly this resolution 480 pixels wide and 270 pixels high. You have to create a graphic with these specific dimensions. If you don't quite get the dimensions right, there's workarounds later on, but I think it's good to start from a scratch with the correct dimensions. So I'm gonna take this graphic and I'm gonna save it on our desktop. So here we are. Here are the only two files that we actually need. There's gonna be mygame.zip with the two files in there from the HTML5 export and our little thumbnail. And with that, on to Newgrounds. If you've never seen this, this is Newgrounds. It looks very colorful, very crazy. Now, uh, something I really enjoy about Newgrounds is that it has really good discoverability. And this might seem like a weird thing to say because the website looks very chaotic, very, you know, there's lots of stuff happening everywhere. There's lots of colorful images and it's like, ah, lists and everything. That seems like chaotic. But something that's really good about Newgrounds is that it has a lot of ways in which your game, your content can creep up to the surface so it can actually you know, be exposed to people. People can see your game in various ways. There's different ways of accessing the content that is buried in this website. Now, something you have to do here is you have to create your own uh, profile. And as always, I'm not going to walk you through that part. I think you can create your own account on a website. You're a, you're a big person. Uh, but yeah, it will. you have to click on the upper right corner. And then uh, once you create your account, you will see something like this. So in order to get started, you want to click on your projects. This will show you a list of other projects. And I'm getting a bit nostalgic here because the first project I ever uploaded on this website was in 2007. That's a long time ago. Anyway, you upload a new project with this little tiny, a little bit hidden button here, new project. You have to specify what kind of project it is. In this case, we want to upload a game. Now this will launch into this big form where you can um, enter exactly what kind of game it is and you know set it up so it works exactly the way you want it. First, we have to type in a title. Then there's a small description, usually a sentence or so. Something like this. And uh, now comes the part where we're actually uploading our game. I'm just going to click inside and I'm just going to pick my game from our desktop. The game has uploaded and now I have to specify exactly uh, how big the window is that our little website should appear in. Uh, so this is something that you have to kind of experiment with. Uh, here are my numbers that I like to use. 950 in width and 650 in height. And then there's some additional information here. Touch screen friendly? Certainly not. Uh, supports gamepads? Yes. Enable iframe scrolling? No. Uses shaded array buffer cross origin isolation? No. We could actually already preview it with a little link here, but I'm not going to do it just now. Uh, I will continue with all the other information. Here's a place for us to upload an image, and I'm going to do that. Again, using the uh, thumbnail that we prepared just now. You will see a preview of how the thumbnail will look on the actual website. Now here's some details that we have to kind of like narrow down what kind of content we're uploading. Now we have to pick a genre. Uh, I was uh, uh, looking earlier and I realized, yeah, there's, mm, there's, there's some very specific genres here. Gadgets dress up. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a very old website. Uh, anyway, I, something I want to pick is here, I think, action other that fits kind of, kind of our game. Here also we specify, you know, how much adult content is in here. Again, something that's very important for this website, but for us, uh, it's fine for, to pick none for all these things. Now here's the part where we actually have to add some commentary, some, uh, some, some description of the game. And I would actually 
invests a little bit of time to kind of clarify, to explain in great detail and in a very user-friendly way what this game is all about and how it works. I have a little copy and paste thing that kind of like um, shows you at least four paragraphs that you should be able to fill in for your game. Okay, we have four paragraphs. I cannot make this this um, this box here any bigger, uh, but I'm just going to walk you through the four paragraphs that I was talking about. First, uh, we need a paragraph about the controls. What kind of buttons you need to press to do things? What kind of buttons do things? Even maybe like laying out like this is a game that is controlled with a keyboard. As I said, not a lot of Pico 8 games make it to new grounds. Some do, but not a lot. You have to expect that your audience has never played a Pico 8 game before and they don't know how to use it. In fact, most of the games that are new grounds are actually controlled with a mouse. So you have to really specify what buttons they need to press to do what. Now, people on new grounds are notorious about not reading the descriptions. So get ready to get a lot of comments about that. I think it's just important to make sure that all the controls are really clearly explained and otherwise just be patient. The second paragraph here is about the rules and again explain exactly how the game works, what the rules are. Now if people know how to control things in the game they usually can figure out as they go and some games even have tutorials. But even if your game does have a tutorial it's still worthwhile having a place where you spell out all the rules so if there is an understanding or people don't, don't quite get something they have a place where they can go to and look things up. Now the third paragraph is behind the scenes, uh, offering some behind the scenes content, um, explaining people in which context the game was created and maybe giving them some uh, insight into how it was created. Um, in Newgrounds, maybe not the most important paragraph because usually most people in here won't be developers, they will be people interested in playing games. That's actually a huge strength of Newgrounds. But you still might get a bit more engagement if you explain exactly what you did and why you did it. And finally, very important, the credits, a section at the end where you explain exactly who you are, where you came from, who work on this project, and how people can contact you if they want to know something about the game. Now, in this case, I just filled in all of the different paragraphs with like some bogus text. This is kind of like a lorem ipsum. But yeah, your goal will be to fill in this text and write something meaningful in here. Something I wanted to also point out is that you actually have quite a lot of options to um, structure this text. You can actually, you know, import YouTube videos and images and links and even make things bold and everything. So you have some control over the layout of this description box. But in the end, of course, it's just like a little box underneath the game. Uh, for Newgrounds, this description is not quite as important as it is for other websites. Now, moving on, underneath here, we have a, a tag field and you can type in 12 tags. And again, as always, if you can put tags on something, I would always use the maximum amount of tags. Arcade, Breakout, Pico 8, Retro, Tennis, Short, 8-bit, Chiptunes, Bricks, Breaking, Brick, Pedal, Power Ups. Maybe not the best tags here, but you don't really get really good tools for Newgrounds to research how popular those tags are, sadly. Okay, so now we have some additional options here, allow embedding. I would leave this off because otherwise mm, other websites can embed the game without linking to Newgrounds and that's just not really good. Requires Newgrounds login, no, we don't need it. And opt out, out of any wars, you absolutely do not want to cross this box because that will actually uh, diminish all of the returns that you will get from the actual website. Now down here is our bunch of buttons that allow you to continue a little bit here. Publish project is obviously the important button that will actually publish the project, but we're not quite there yet. Users and credits, uh, sounds like this is where your credits would go, but actually this is a place for you to point out other users from Newgrounds that worked in this to kind of have like collaborations that key people can track down who participated in what uh, unless you work with another person on this project that also is a new ground uh, this is actually not interesting for you team tools again not quite important it's a tool to communicate with other people that are also on new grounds while you are working on this project again like a collaboration tool but preview is a button that we might want to press right now so yeah, this is our game. This is our game running in Newgrounds. There we are. If you click on this, it plays just fine. Yeah, this is this is how it works. Really good. Um, so yeah, you can press this, this little pen here to get back to where you were. But otherwise, like you can actually even invite other people to do some testing. Um, you can uh, set who has access to this specific website and invite them here and, and you know ask them if this is working for them. Here you can see our uh, comments, our description that we had previously. And yeah, underneath later on when the game is actually published, it's not published yet, but eventually, um, this is where the comments will show up. Now there is another tool here, another button that I want to press here, uh, API tools. Now here's a whole bunch of information 
uh, that you can use to integrate your project into the Newgrounds API. Uh, for us, for Pico8 users, there's only like one or two ways in which we can integrate uh, our Pico8 games. And that is uh, we can, there is a way of triggering achievements, the uh, Newgrounds achievements from a Pico8 project. And there's also a way in which you can integrate high score lists from Pico8. Sadly, doing both requires uh, intricate knowledge of JavaScript and it's a little bit out of the scope, outside of the scope of this specific video. But what I will do is link this website here and down in the doobly-doo, which is an um, uh, article created by Biggestone, who um, actually went through the process of doing this integration and actually shows you some of the code and how to get things running. If you have uh, even a vague familiarity with JavaScript, you should be able to go and get through this and get um, your uh, achievements integrated and the high score integrated. Eventually, I will make a tutorial about this, but uh, until then, this is your place to get started. So yeah, that's basically it. All you have to do at this point is just click on published project and it will get released into the Newgrounds ecosystem. Now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what will happen just to get you prepared. I'm not going to do it right now because I just don't want to get like in people confused about what's happening. Uh, but yeah, generally uh, I click on portal here and here you can see the latest submissions. Um, so there is like an incentive system here on Newgrounds that will encourage people and reward people for reviewing and rating content that appears new on the website. So you can see here this list here, this list with those purple lines. This is all new stuff that is just released on Newground. And there's people going through this stuff and reviewing all of it and they get like fake internet points for that. This is why Newgrounds is such a good place to get feedback, is you will definitely have a whole bunch of people going through your game and actually writing some reviews. The website doesn't actually show the reviews until some period has passed, so people don't can't influence each other in the kind of ratings they give. It's kind of smart like this. So as long as your game is under judgment, it will be purple. But as you scroll down, you will see that the games will slowly turn from purple into different colors like blue, uh, green and yellow, and sometimes red. As you can see above here, green means great score, blue means awesome score, really great entry, and uh, red means like it's not really a good game. As you can see, um, entries or content getting out of this review process and being assigned different kind of quality labels. And this is really useful for people who want to check out what kind of cool stuff is happening. You can just click on the blue links and maybe on the green ones. So yeah, if you're lucky and your game gets good reviews, it might get picked up on other places in the website and actually be shown on the front page. So this is actually maybe a good challenge for a newcomer Pico8 developer um, to make a game that actually gets featured somewhere maybe on the front page or um, here maybe in this daily picks kind of line. There's lots of ways in which you can appear at the front page. And if you do, you actually get a reward for it. So yeah, this is high stakes and you can see like all the rewards I, I got from this specific game. This could be like a challenge for you guys. Uh, try to get on the front page on your grounds. Now here are the comments. And as I mentioned, you tend to get more comments than you get on other websites because of the system involved here. But also the comments will be, let's say, more direct and sometimes a little bit edgy. Here's a really good one. Uh, a somewhat fun idea that has been designed kind of poorly. And then a huge wall of text explaining how I got my math wrong and how everything about this game is just trash. Too much luck, not enough skill, semi-good, don't like MG-based games. I'm actually cherry-picking here because people were actually really enjoying this game a lot. But that doesn't mean it will always go this way and there's something wrong with your game. People will certainly, boy, will they let you know that something is wrong with your game. My advice would be try not to get discouraged. Try not to get focused on individual comments. Look at the big picture of what are people actually generally saying. Uh, and, you know, I have 29 pages of comments here. And something I see about this specific game is that a lot of people are saying that it's confusing and not really understanding how this game is played. And that's fair criticism. That's a really good feedback here because that's actually true yeah i don't have a tutorial in the game and i rely very much on uh, the description to explain to people how this game is played and it's not really intuitive so yeah that's something i definitely want to improve upon especially if i release it here on new grounds this is it this is how you release things on new grounds and this video is actually part of a three-part series where i explain how to release pico 8 projects on various websites so if you like this video you might also want to check out the other videos in this series about how to publish pico 8 games on the lex Love for bbs or on itch.io otherwise see you next time around guys bye bye